the Bible says that teachers are going to be judged more strictly. So I'm very aware of that. And one of the things I don't want to do is teach lies. But I'm also aware that we are all learning in progression, including me. So my understanding increases more and more. And sometimes I have to adjust a little bit here and there. But the intention is not to deceive anyone. Yes, your intentions can be good, but if you are not open for correction, then you're still a hypocrite. Uh, that's why I want to talk about William Fink of uh, the website Christogenia. And he teaches things. He has been doing this for years. And uh, I've been listening this week a lot to him. And a lot I do agree on. Other things I might be wrong, but I'm still looking into it. Because, uh, like I always say, don't also just believe everything I say, but also uh, show yourself approved by your own study. But what I always notice is that when someone finds one truth, they fully devote themselves to that truth. But often they think because they know this one truth, now they have figured everything, everything, all the other things out too. So his main message is the message of identity, right? And he takes it all the way. There is no room for compromise at all in this study. And that is uh, good at one thing, because we shouldn't compromise. Um, and he has been studying this topic longer than I have, uh, even though some things have so much implications on so many levels that I'm still meditating on it day and night. And I'm not saying he's wrong about that, right? I'm just saying um, we should also look into it ourselves, but we have to be open for correction. Now William Fink calls everyone who does not agree with him a clown and a chump and idiots. Yes, this message he preaches is very important and there are so many pastors and preachers who just don't want to lose anybody. It's more about enriching themselves or having a big following and they don't want to be corrected. And they are basically, yeah, to a certain level, they are clowns, but to call Everyone who comes to more knowledge and has a hunger for truth and just don't see things yet, right? To call everybody a clown and a chump and an idiot uh, because they don't see yet what he sees, uh, that goes a little bit too far in my opinion. So by his own reasoning, is William Fink a clown and a chump and an idiot himself? Well, let's listen to what he says and I'm going to react to it because like I always see, they know one thing and they are totally ignorant of another topic. But at the same time, they think now they have figured everything out. Tonight, I'm going to do something a little different. This is Christian Identity Directions. It's a forum subtopic at Christogenia where I often post um, answers to people and things that I believe are um, necessary responses to false doctrines, false ideas, bad ideas that come into what, what I consider to be Christian identity. Uh, of course, this isn't the, the, the only island of Christianity, uh, Christ, Christi, Christian identity, I'm sorry, believers in the world. But w without bragging, it is one of the larger ones, there's no doubt. And we have to set an example, and, and that example has to come from Scripture. It has to come from a hundred percent of Scripture. And all these clowns that think that one Bible verse over here can somehow trump or disprove a Bible verse that you quote, those people are idiots. Because no part of the Word of God contradicts itself. We accept the whole thing. It, if, I mean, there are verses and, and, and books that we have problems with, but we can document those problems and we can explain why we have those problems. This book is spurious for those reasons. Book of Esther. This verse is, is corrupt, and, and this is why, because it's a violation of Hebrew grammar. So we attempt to correct that. But that correction has to be in the spirit of the entire scripture and the context of the verse in question. This verse over here is mistranslated. Here's why. Here's what it should say. There's why. There's how. That's what we do. 
we don't accept simply the King James Version. We may as well all go, go jump into a lake if we had to do that. But what we seek the truth of the scripture in the spirit of the entire scripture. That's important. That's what we do. And when we do that, we find that the scripture does indeed not contradict itself. The word of God does not contradict itself, period. Your verse, if I lay out a, a proof of something, your one verse cannot deny my proof. If it does, then there's a problem with misunderstanding. There's a problem with the, 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 the um, understanding of the context of the verse, who it was spoken to, why it was spoken. Um, that there's a problem with, 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 well, with your interpretation, but this sure as hell isn't a problem with the Word of God. I've said it many times here before in these programs. And, and and I'm not really trying to be draconian. I, I can't control who comes to Christogenia and downloads my programs. I just can't. I, I can't control who sits here and talks you. But if you're out there listening to clowns that deny that Yahshua Christ is Yahweh God come in the flesh, you're denying the Messiah. You're an antichrist. I don't want you listening to me. If you're listening to that clown Eli James, that clown Dewey Tucker, they deny the divinity of Christ, I don't want you listening to me. I don't want you here. Don't come around here no more. If you're a what one of these um what what one of these you, closet universalists that want to allow um, 15% whites or 25% whites or 85% whites or 75% whites and into the um, kingdom of God if you don't understand what white is I don't want you here don't come around here no more I don't want to hear you I don't want to see your damn face you're a pervert you're a corrupter of the word of God you're a destroyer of the white race Christ said he who is not gathering with me scatters and and if you're not gathering sheep to the sheepfold then you're scattering the sheep trying to sneak in wolves or part wolves you're working against our cause you're not working for our cause not at all you, you may as well be a damn Jew this is a certain fellow whose name is David Kennedy who made a post, and, and I'm not saying David Kennedy is a bad guy, but he's either deceived or he's a clown. He made a post on the so-called Covenant People's Ministry forum this past week, which was brought to my attention, and which is so exemplary of the many fundamental problems and the reasons for division amongst identity Christians today It's so exemplary of those things that I decided that I should address it here at length tonight. This is because it not only helps to reveal the names and the agendas of many of those who claim to be identity Christians, but who actually promote race mixing. And it is also exemplary of many of our own misunderstandings and how we so often allow ourselves to be deceived by those who have agendas. You're not going to... You, you could teach everybody the wrong version of the Bible. Look at what the Catholics do. That doesn't mean you're going to defeat the plan of God in the end. I'm sorry, your ass is toast. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 6. For whom Yahweh loves, he disciplines. So... He says that if you deny, and I quote, Yeshua Christ is Yahweh God in the flesh, then you're a chump and a clown. Well, let's take a closer look at this and judge him by his own standards. He says the Bible does not contradict itself. Well, if you take a closer look at the Trinity, or maybe he is a oneness believer, but all these things heavily contradict themselves right but they always say yeah but if you deny this what I believe that you are like a Muslim or a Mormon uh, or a Jehovah Witness that's just nonsense right 
Muslims deny that Jesus is the son of the living God. They, they deny he is that Messiah. They deny he died on the cross. They deny he rose after three days. They deny that Jesus is the high priest of heaven. So denying that Yeshua Christ is Yahweh God in the flesh does not make you a Muslim. So he says, if there is any contradiction, there is not a problem with the Bible. There is a problem with your understanding. There's a problem with your context. It's a problem with your interpretation. There is a problem with your translations. Now he has put so much work in putting the identity message in the proper context and in the right translations. He has done a good job. But when it comes to Yeshua is Yahweh in the flesh or Yahweh in the flesh, he still doesn't have any clue what he's doing. He obviously clearly did not study this topic. So he says, you have to believe that Yeshua Christ is Jehovah God in the flesh. And if you deny that, then you're um, denying the Messiah. He says, if you deny this, then you're an antichrist, right? Because evil men have evil agendas, right? Also the Catholic Church has a different agenda, but he still hasn't figured out that yes, the Catholic Church made the message different but also the Catholic Church is the one who created the Trinity. But even if they don't believe in the Trinity, they still believe that Jehovah God of Yahweh God came in a, uh, in a body, like he was an avatar, like it was just an outside and God was in there, like Jesus had no will of, of its own, right? All the praying Jesus did to God the Father, it was all a farce because he was Yahweh himself, right? It's a contradiction, but they just can't see it. Now, by his own reasoning, I'm going to judge him by his own words, is that if there's anything in the New Testament that seems uh, to contradict, go to the Old Testament and find proof. And he himself always likes to go Deuteronomy to prove his point. So let's go to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 18.18 Yahweh said to Moses, I will raise them up a prophet from among the brethren, a prophet from among the Israelites, like you, Moses, like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. Now, is there anything in this verse where Yahweh said, I will come down myself as a man, and I will put my own words in myself. Is there anything in this verse other than Yahweh says to Moses that he will raise up a prophet from among the Israelites and Yahweh will put his words in his mouth and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. Jesus kept saying, my words are not my own. My teachings are not my own. They are from the one who sent me. How much more clearer must Jesus be. He did not say, I am Jehovah God in the flesh. Where does it say that? So he says, if you don't believe that Yeshua Christ is Yahweh in the flesh, you're an antichrist. What does the Bible say about what is an antichrist? And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of antichrist. Does it say that every spirit that confesses not that Yahweh is come in the flesh. It doesn't say that Yahweh came in the flesh. It says that Jesus Christ came in the flesh. What does it mean? It means that he was promised. They were waiting for the Messiah, but these Jews denied that he was the Messiah, but he was actually there. You could touch him. He was no longer a promise and a prophecy. He was there in the flesh, Mr. Fink. See, William Fink, who calls everybody a clown, understands that the Catholics made the gospel of reconciliation into a universal gospel. But at the same time, he doesn't understand that these same Catholics made Jesus into God Almighty. The same people who even made Roman emperors into God. The same people who walk around with Babylonian heads in the form of a Babylonian God, the fish God. 
right? He doesn't understand this. He doesn't understand that the apostles in the first century did not believe that Jesus was God Almighty. They believed that Jesus was the Son of the living God. I know, I know, immediately I hear him think, yeah, but the Bible clearly says that God was manifest in the flesh, right? Let's go over this verse which pops up in his mind. 1 Timothy uh, chapter 3, 16. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. See, it says God was manifest in the flesh. But Mr. Fink, where is your discernment? You call everybody chumps because they don't look up what the Greek actually says. You do that with the identity doctrine, why don't you do it with this before you start calling everybody a chump and a clown, right? First of all, this whole chapter three is about how to lead godly lives. And if you wanna lead godly lives, it's about this mystery of godliness. What is the mystery of godliness in Colossians? We read, the mystery of godliness is Christ in us. Right? It doesn't say what all these Christians say, great is the mystery of God, so it's a mystery who God is, Trinity is a mystery. It doesn't say that. It's about the mystery of godliness, the mystery of how to lead godly lives. And then it says, God was manifest in the flesh. It doesn't say that. Look up the Greek, it says, he was manifest in the flesh. Who? Well, we already saw it in 1 John. Jesus Christ was manifest in the flesh. It doesn't say Yahweh was manifest in the flesh, right? Read on. Justified in the spirit. God Almighty doesn't need to be justified in the spirit. Seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles. Who was preached unto the Gentiles? Jesus Christ believed on in the world, received, uh, received up in glory. God Almighty does not need to be received up in glory. This is another manipulation of the text and he hasn't figured it out yet. Here is another verse about who is an antichrist. 1 John 2, 22. Who is a liar but he that denied that Jesus is the Christ, that Yeshua is the Messiah, he is an antichrist that denied the Father and the Son. If you deny that Jesus is the Messiah, you also deny the Father. That doesn't mean Jesus is the Father. Jesus said, believe in me, believe also in God. Thousands and thousands of times in the Old Testament, there's only one God and it is always the Father. So who is a liar? He that denied that Jesus is Yahweh? No, it doesn't say that. It says that Jesus is the Messiah. The Messiah is someone who is anointed by God. And if you deny that Jesus is that Messiah anointed by God, you're an Antichrist. And we see that all these people who denied Jesus the Messiah, they were Antichrist. Again, stop lying about the text calling everybody a chump and lying that the text says that if you deny that Jesus is Yahweh. It doesn't say that Jesus is Yahweh. It says, don't deny that Jesus is the Messiah. So this by itself should be proof that Jesus is not Yahweh in the flesh, right? This clearly states that Jesus came in the flesh, not Yahweh. That means if you want to go to John 1, 1 and all the other verses you like to use, you are contradicting the clear words about what an Antichrist is. And you judge people based on your own errors. But like you say yourself, if other people come to me that this one verse can refute you, right? It's a matter of their misinterpretation, their lack of context. It goes the same for you too. If there is any, any other verse that pops up in your mind that contradicts that Jesus is not Yahweh, that means there is a misunderstanding in your own mind. And I wouldn't be uh, this upset 
if you still lack understanding and you want to be open for correction, no, I'm this upset because you call everybody a clown and a chump. Well, it seems by your own admission, you're a clown and a chump yourself. And what these people always do call everybody a Muslim or a Jew if you deny the Trinity, that's a straw man argument. Because these Muslims and a the Jew, they deny that Jesus is the Christ, right? And then they say, yeah, but you take away the divinity of Christ if you deny the divinity. That is nowhere in scripture, right? I made a lot of videos about all these verses and in the right context, in the right translations, we see that it is exactly true what the disciples thought of him. He was the son of the living God, the Messiah, nothing else, right? And the son of God who did God's will died, but death could not hold him. God raised him up from the dead, right? He was exalted to the right hand of God, having all authority, and he must rule till he has put all his enemies under his feet. Then even Jesus himself would hand everything up to God the Father. If Jesus is Yahweh in the flesh, why would he put down all rule and authority if all his task is accomplished, right? It's contradictions, right? Jesus is not Yahweh, Jesus is the mediator between Yahweh and man. The Bible is very clear, there's only one God and someone else, a mediator between God and man, the man, Jesus Christ. He's exalted, sitting at the right hand of God. He's our high priest. These priests in the Old Testament, in the Old Covenant, were corrupt. God made a new covenant based on better promises. We have now an incorruptible high priest. And if you think that Jesus is Yahweh in the flesh, you don't have a high priest. You don't have a Messiah. It's a false thing. It's a corruption. It's a Roman Catholic thing who one always wanted to make man into gods, right? So it's a big misunderstanding on your end, right? So I hope um, People who believe what he says and threaten everybody always, oh, you're a chump and a clown and you're an antichrist. If that is all Roman Catholic scare tactics to to blind and deafen the people because they're all afraid. Oh, you cannot deny the the, the, the deity of Christ. That is not in the Bible, right? You have to understand who Jesus Christ truly is. You are not a son of Jesus and you're not a brother of God. You're a son of God. How can we be sons of God? By believing in our big brother, Jesus Christ, our mediator, our high priest. He makes intercession. He is the way to the Father, right? So please, everybody who and also when they say, yeah, but it is spreading division. Oh, now suddenly lies are loud as long as you don't spread division, right? So you're not very consistent in what you teach, right? And I see this all the time. I see the Unitarian Church. They finally understand that Jesus Christ is not Yahweh, but the son of Yahweh, the Messiah. They understand that. But the, I know I know teachers who have been preaching this now for decades, but the, all the other doctrines are still universal and still very evangelical, right? And it's the same thing with identity teachers. They have been opening up to this truth. They fully go for this truth, but now they think they have everything right. But there is much more to go through. So by the grace of God, everybody who still believes in this Roman Catholic Trinity or this Greek Roman philosophy, uh, Egyptian Babylonian idea, right, about oneness and all these things. You have to repent of this because you will never understand what Jesus is, right? For if you are reconciled by Jesus, your spirit cries out, Abba, Father, because Jesus is the way to God the Father. And, uh, you know, ma many don't even know who the daddy is. Do you know who your daddy is? Jesus is not your daddy, Jesus is your brother, right? So I hope this helps because don't threaten people, don't call people clowns and chumps, right? You might be right about one thing, but you can be in error. Don't think because 
you are right about one thing that now you know everything about everything call everybody a clown right because if you call your brother Raka you'll be in danger of fire yourself right so let's all stay open-minded and just seek for the truth and if you don't believe this you go to hell and if you deny it which which is just not in the Bible we should be very careful with that right because only the truth matters God bless.